call this meeting to order of the Ad Hoc Community Center Committee for the Town of Scarborough. Um, and just let me just go around the table. I'm uh, Patrick O'Reilly, uh, chairman, I guess, of the committee. Uh, Tom Hall, town manager, and his invited guest. Anna Smeehan, um, member of the Scarborough League on the committee. Sorry for missing the last meeting. I something came up with. And John Kelleher, school board. Aaron Shute, town council. Uh, Todd Souza, director of community services. Bill Donovan, library representative. Amelia Kurtz. Regular representative, <laughs> <laughs> member. committee member. Often, yeah. <laughs> Jim Weaver, ad hoc committee member. Perfect. Thank you. Um, We've got two members online. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Hi there, Liz Stanford, resident committee member. Alex Marshall, uh, resident committee member, see uh, community services advisory board member as well. Perfect. Thank you and welcome. Um, we have the minutes from our last meeting on September 25th, which are in front of you. Um, one motion to approve. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Um, I don't is. think you can vote. No? Where did the wait on? Oh, the wait on is still. Yep. Oh, we can't. I'll make a motion then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the second here. And the committee members voting. Yes. Yeah. That's four, five, six. Good. Thank you. Um, my name is the public here that I see or online. Is that correct? Do we do online? Yeah, we do. And we do not. We just have Darren and Keith, both uh, Keith from UTL and then Darren um, from Ballad of the King when uh, we get to that part of the agenda. Okay, perfect. And I'd ask uh, item five, I'll ask Darren to give an update um, from the appointments committee for additional members and the vacant seats. Sure. So last night we made the first round to choose Erin uh, Courtney, who is currently, she works for Maine Turnpike Authority as an outreach manager and leg legislative liaison. So she does outreach, public access, talking to people, getting out there. I, we thought she might be a good fit considering this, what we're going to be doing in the spring. And then we have Gwendolyn Simons, who is a triathlete, who is an attorney and also a physical therapist who runs a business in town, who is pretty active in um some of the other, I think, business organizations, and now wants to kind of get involved as well. Okay. Yeah. So the council meets when to approve their appointment. That's a good point. I don't know if it's on our agenda for tomorrow. I don't know if it is, but we can add it. If um, I know we did uh, communicate with both candidates. I spoke to them. Oh, you did. Yep. Oh, good. Yep. Okay. So I mean, they want to do it. I encourage them to tune in tonight. Um, so they're they're down for it. They're going to do it. And so I said, even though the appointments might take a little while, it would be good to kind of. It will likely be uh, November eight. Yeah. Okay. It couldn't be added to this next because we have another meeting before that. I think right. I have no problem telling them to come to that yes. meeting and say you're going to be on it. I think you should show up. We've I already told them we've already had a couple of meetings. I think you guys. I told them maybe we could pare down some of the material and not overwhelm them right away. The next one's the ninth. Oh, so that's right afterwards. Uh, <laughs> since we're not necessarily in a decision making phase yet. So no, just no, having it not be part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah, yeah. 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 no, I, I think so. And I'll I'll reach out again and encourage them to do that. And maybe encourage them because I think our meetings are the videos are posted. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So could yeah. see that, especially yeah. the meetings tonight. because I think we're gonna get a lot of information tonight um, from yeah. UTO about the and I have spaces. a copy of these sent to me today, so I'll add their email addresses to the list serve of the group. Yep. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and number six is uh, Tom Anister update on CEA and TIP and uh, clarifications around those. Yeah, I'm not sure what the nature of the conversation was at your last meeting, but I'm here because I think these kind of topics came up. I guess I first want to make myself available as a resource, but but also kind of discourage you from kind of chasing this too far. You know, th these are potential financing mechanisms that the town will consider. I think the one area that I would encourage you to just Appreciate um, there there are potentially significant financial benefits for a project that would be located within uh, an existing TIF um, area or close to it, such that we could modify it to include an area. So as you're considering your site selection, I might suggest that that be somehow integrated or considered as part of your criteria that you establish. Um, again, it's not make or break necessarily, but I think it's it's certainly something the town will consider. And I'll, I'll just give a little thumbnail sketch. Um, we have made arrangements in the downtown TIF and, and 
essentially that's a thousand acres that includes Oak Hill and the Downs area. So it's the majority of the center of town, if you will, pretty good geographic footprint. Uh, we've made arrangements with the state agencies to allow us to potentially use uh, TIF revenues, the revenues collected within that area, uh, to help offset uh, costs of certain projects, including a community center. And so that's about as far advanced as we've gone, frankly. Uh, but the groundwork is there, and that's certainly consideration we'll make if the opportunity presents itself. So again, I would just, I think, uh, I'm pleased to talk to any one of you, you know, in more depth if you want, but I, I think that's probably a rabbit hole that you don't need to concern yourself with, other than the fact that there could be benefits to us um, in terms of where this facility is sited. I, uh, I guess with respect to a credit enhancement agreement with the CEA, that was in fact a, a, uh, a focal point of our discussion the last time we convened as a committee back in 2018. And that is because um, uh, the existing credit enhancement agreement with the Downs uh, had a provision that uh, essentially brought us to the table uh, to see if there's any potential partnership. And so we've explored that fully and kind of moved past that, hence this committee being formed. And so there's really no bearing in my view uh, a credit enhancement agreement has at this point. Uh, it's really the, the TIF would be the, the, the vehicle through which the, uh, we could potentially finance the project. So that's kind of the long and short of it. Um, I, I know you've got an ambitious charge and, and a, an aggressive schedule. I encourage you to keep focused on those deliverables. Uh, you've got great consultants and staff support um so use them to your advantage i would say so you would say that the, the potential of a tip would be possibly a a um factor in considering site location among many other factors among many others yes and i wouldn't necessarily even suggest it be a uh, standalone criterion necessarily but maybe you know uh, i'm not sure how you're going to work out all the different criteria but i hope you do uh, come up with some sort of methodology whereby you can compare and uh, contrast each site uh, in terms of its characteristics. And this is a factor that should be considered, I would say. Okay. I think that's helpful. Um, any questions for Tom on the topic at all? Was, were we planning on having Tom stay, or did we want to talk, maybe skip to item eight really quick if that's something else? So Tom wanted to chime in on. I'm, I'm pleased to sit your meeting and sure. okay, that's thank fine. You, then we'll just keep it the agenda then. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, so I know we have uh, folks from Utah, Utah yep. here um, to talk about some of the um, space and activities criteria for site selection and what the process looks like moving forward with them as the consultants on this project. So I will just ask them both to unmute and then Keith and Darren, thanks for joining us, and I'll. We'll turn the presentation over to you just quickly. Everybody should have received their updated packets uh, that they sent for this meeting with a timeline and deliverables, but I, you do have a hard copy in front of you for your own reference and uh, just thought that'd be easier. So, and I've already shared their screen. So we'll give it go. I'll turn it over to you, gentlemen. Thank you. Great. Thanks. It's, it's really great to be here. I'm Keith Case with UTEAL. Uh, I have the pleasure of, of interacting with, with several of you uh, a few weeks ago. And I've got here uh, 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 one of our team members, Darren Barr from Ballard King. Um, and he's uh, doing some of the financial analysis and community outreach uh, alongside uh, us for this project. So he's going to be involved, you know, really the, the full uh, during the whole process. Um, you know, he's a wealth of knowledge in terms of the uh, athletic programming, uh, but also will be key on the back end, looking at the kind of financial and revenue uh, aspects alongside you know, our, our uh, cost estimator, who's who's uh, uh, we working on the actual cost of, of the nuts and bolts of the building. Um, so I, I know that there was a meeting that we weren't a part of uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, um, and I think you might have gone over some of the homework and, and reviewed a little bit of, of the past uh, ad hoc committee uh, reports, et cetera. Um, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of, of that today. You know, what, what we brought mostly is a lot of kind of questions and, dis and discussion topics that we'll be uh, le leading through and trying to really um, – uh, help shape the discussion around the program, and then uh, potentially at the end a little bit about the site. Um, and hopefully, the, any discussion you've already done has has been uh, helped uh, um, really 
drilled down on uh, on the feelings on the committee and uh, you know gotten some of the points out there for consideration. And so now when we talk about it, maybe that we'll have a a more um, kind of um, isolated discussion with uh, with some 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 <laughs> ideas that have really uh, already been uh, considered and uh, uh, and very and thoughtfully can. Uh, thought through. Um, just looking at, at the agenda for tonight, um, you know, I think we'll start with some context and general questions, uh, really trying to, to get get at, at, at the at the broad level what uh, what our what our charge is on the design side. Um, we we had some time to think about the uh, and review the the previous uh, committee work as well as the the other documents that are set out and then really started to talk about you know where we stand with the with the programming and what opportunities there are where we feel like we can expand uh and what things we, we feel like uh we're ready to move, move forward developing a little further um and then at the end we'll we'll talk a little about uh, the design schedule and uh the the topics that we saw i see i, I circulated uh really are um our our uh, our best approach to kind of look at where we would like to go with the process and how we're going to be how we're going to try to shape that process, you know, targeting certain community outreach event, reach events uh, and and identifying, you know, where we think we need to be discussing on our own and meeting uh, in order to to uh, bring to the community um, the, what what the the elements that we want to get their feedback on and and ensure that it's a, a really in, incorporative process and that everyone's uh, really in, in involved in, this, in the town. We get the feedback that uh, is required to not only, um, you know, en ensure that all the voices are heard, but also uh, uh, brings us to the point where we have all the information that we need to, uh, to, to present to the town council. Um, and then I think we may be talking a little bit about the site selection uh, at the end. So I always like to look at the design schedule uh, first, and this is going to be a dynamic schedule. You know, I think when we get some feedback later uh, in the evening, uh, we can kind of expand and contract this and talk about where we're going with the dates. But I always like to show where we are uh, at the beginning uh, of every meeting. That way, we have an idea of of where we've been and and what we're working towards right here. And again, this is uh, meant to be kind of a a living document that will update um, every time we meet, um, so that we uh, we we can continue to refine and 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 uh, identify our goals for for each of these. So we you know, we're, we're right here uh, at the beginning of, of what we've identified as task one. Uh, we're looking at about three design meetings before uh, the deliverable number one, which is you know primarily the uh, the program options and isolating the, the program and refining that um, and recapping the, uh, the all the great work that's been done. Uh, and then a lot of this is is building into uh, some of the uh, the, the uh, site and programming and a little bit into the look and feel and aiming towards an, an open house, which, you know, again, when we talk a little more in depth about the um, <clears throat> the timeline, uh, we can talk about whether or not this is uh, an appropriate uh, date to shoot for, uh, whether or not it works with the schedule of people involved, but also uh, the whether or not in time of year seems like we'll get the best involvement uh, for an in-person event. Um, and then as we work through uh, refining the program, building into uh, starting to architecturalize uh, that program and beginning to look at, at NASing and site options and site design uh, and and building towards something that really begins to feel like uh, an architecture project that, uh, the, that the town can really get behind and, and be excited about. Uh, and then towards the end, uh, really wrapping it up so it could be um, standalone as a document that could be uh, deployed, uh, you know, by the next phase and during the next phase of, of the process. So, you know, a lot of this is, is discussion. So hopefully, people feel free to, free to jump in. Um, you know, the the big question we have, we want to step back a little bit. I know a lot of work has has already been done. I think, uh, like as as we talked about a moment ago. The, the first ad hoc committee process was was uh, had a very specific set of contexts that uh, that shaped the process. Um, I know that it was uh, trying to work with the downs and at a certain site and working with the developer. And so this is you know perhaps an opportunity to step back a little bit and uh, and and think a little more broadly, but then also you know help help us as the design team understand a little bit better about where we about how we're shaping this building and and what, how we. Uh, we see the uh, the community at large. Um, so the the kind of big questions we had is you know who who do we expect to use the community center and and um, who do we need to support it is the other piece. Um, you know we obviously got feedback on the surveys of the previous ad hoc uh, committee, but um, I think there's a lot more than just uh, looking at the percentages of um, 
of who responded. Um, and so I, I, this is a, meant to be a little bit loose, but if, if anyone wants to jump in and kind of talk about if you've had a chance to talk to your neighbors or maybe why you, why you, uh, you, uh, elect, you know, volunteer to be part of this and spend, uh, you know, weekday evenings uh, as part of this committee, um, I think that'd actually be pretty important too. All at once, actually. <laughs> so I mean, I'll jump in. So I, I, I'm pretty involved in the youth sports scene between being the president of Little League and working with my son plays football, my daughter plays soccer, my son plays soft soccer, they play indoor basketball, you know, they travel and things. So I know that on the surveys, a lot of stuff came out and it was pull, 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 but I don't know a lot of people that have kids my age that are, think that that's a bigger priority right now, just from what I've heard because the kids don't swim laps and pools, it's more recreational style. And really what a lot of the groups that I know, their biggest problem is that there are alternatives to go swim within the town of Scarborough, but everyone keeps coming back to me saying, we need indoor, you know, we have six months a year, you can't do anything outside unless you play outside sports. So there is, there are no gyms. We spend, you know, basketball since twenty-five thousand dollars a year to go rent other towns' gyms. There are no places for indoor baseball, indoor soccer, you know, the town is just putting out some new things this year, with like floor hockey and new things like that. But there really is a lack of limited availability. And we don't have any programs when you get to like the high school age. Let's be realistic with the like biggest high schools in the state. You can't play high school. If you don't make one of those 12 spots on basketball, you're out. And there's no intramural programs and things like that for older kids. Normally, those things take place at a community center, like in South Portland. They have a whole high school program for intramurals for high school kids that don't make 12 spots in the varsity team, you know? So it's just... There's really no, and, and with the way the school's set up and their, you know, access to those spaces, there's really nowhere to do those things for clubs and programs in town. So they end up in other places. So they're renting the point, they're renting gyms in Biddeford and things. So just, I know one thing that is really important, one of the reasons I want to get involved is because there's such a lack of access to the spaces at the schools for those groups that where we have no, there was nowhere to go. And I think that's one of the big reasons that, that I wanted to be involved was to find out, is there a way to build something that can fit some of those needs, taking some maybe pressure off the schools, who knows with the new school, if that might help or not help. Um, but just, I think there's a lot of groups in town that would want to be more involved. I know the soccer club would do indoor soccer, <laughs> but you got to go rent one of these domes at 300 bucks an hour to do that. And it's just not feasible. Um, so I know a lot of towns, Westbrook has a huge community center. They do a lot of those adult pickup basketball games. <laughs> We just don't have a lot of those things in town because we don't have the space. And I think that's a really important charge. I know it's come out overwhelmingly on some of the surveys that the pool is the biggest part. It's also one of the biggest funds. I mean, it's expensive to run those things. So I just I just really want to make sure that one of the things I'm involved with is looking at how are we trying to find space to do some of these things and then then make it available because you can't fit everyone's needs. And are there ways to do that um, in town? And that's kind of one of the reasons I want to be involved. Um, I'll go next. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the biggest reason I wanted to get involved, um, I am a parent. Um, uh, my kids are adults. Um, the, so I don't really come at it from that perspective, although, of course, having four kids, you know, it, it, it would be great to have all those kinds of spaces and all that. That's very important. Um, my line of work is as a recreation therapist. And I work with um, the senior population and disabled people, things like that. So um, in thinking about getting involved with this committee, I really wanted to make sure that um, all aspects of our community were thought about. Um, I know we, we have buildings that are, that are, I think, going to be built that are specifically for people that um, need accommodations and they have disabilities. And, and I, I think um, the community center needs to remember that it's much larger than just school aid kids. And that's, that's pretty much why I got involved. Uh, <clears throat> are there a lot of these, uh, what, what organizations do you work with? And are there other organizations that you anticipate would be looking to find a, a home or, or at least mm -hmm. use of the facility? 
Um, well, I work at Piper Shores, which is um, uh, independent living, um, all levels of care, um, life care community in Scarborough. And we actually have a great indoor pool, <laughs> um, but it's, it's not enough um, even. Uh, and talking with a lot of the residents um, at Piper Shores and just a lot of people that I've run into talking about that I'm on the committee. Um, what do you think about a pool? What do you think we need? You know, I, I do hear that even though there are other places to go uh, swimming or whatnot, or go to a, a community pool. It's, it, it's, it's not always easy. Now I can't say that I've looked at all the schedules of all the area pools, um, but I've done a little bit of that and um, it, it feels pretty limited unless you actually live in the community. Um, you can't always go whenever you want, you know, because you're not a resident. Um, so in terms of the senior population, um, I know that I could definitely see our department at Piper Shores providing transportation to the community center to use the walking. Um, if there's some sort of walking indoor course, I could see them doing that year round, um, you know, because they just love, love to walk. Um, and and I could see them using the pool. Uh, a lot of them do a, you know, um, a lot of water aerobics. We have u &E that comes in and does our programming for fitness. Um, but uh, those classes are super full. Um, not everybody can get into them. So I, I think that the, the senior population would definitely be interested in that. Um, from a standpoint of um, recreation therapy also, um, Myself, I am in aquatic physical therapy right now, and I can't go use that pool when I want to do exercises. And <clears throat> it would be great to have a, a pool in our own community to use. And I also know that there are a lot of um, physical therapists, groups like that, that would be interested in using that space, you know, um, having some sort of office there, being able to go in and use that as well. For their for their clients um and then in terms of like accessibility that's the other reason i wanted to be involved was to really be sure that whatever it is that we're going to do with the community center that it's accessible um and of course there's ada and you know all sorts of regulations but they don't always cover is it actually accessible um is a pool actually for someone who has, you know, uses a wheelchair, can they actually get into the pool? Just because they can get into the door of the community center, center doesn't mean they can actually get into the pool without aids or other help, that kind of thing. So that that's pretty much um, why I got involved. Yeah, there's a big difference between accessible and like universal design. You know, they're they're, yeah. they're not they're not equivalent. Um, you know, designing <laughs> mm -hmm. for with more attention, you know, there's the meeting the letter of the law versus, you know, designing with, you know, a whole community in mind. Mm -hmm. um, great. Yeah. Thanks. That, that's very helpful. Good. Um, maybe someone else who wants to discuss, um, you know, something that, you know, we'll, we can talk Alex about. Yeah, Alex has his hand up. Oh, great. Alex, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, sorry I couldn't be there tonight in person. Uh, it was just a little challenging with the kiddos this evening. But, uh, you know, I think there's uh, there's a number of reasons why um, I'm on the committee. I don't need to dive into all those at this moment. But I think, um, you know, there's I from my my line of work is I see a I see a huge need for uh, this kind of space. Uh, just, you know, dealing with uh, well, managing a nice arena and also dealing with um, or being closely acquainted with the recreation department in Portland and seeing their interactions with school sites and the community center, small community center spaces that we have there, um, you know, having a centralized uh, space where everybody can kind of gather and, uh, and, and we can program it the way that we need to. Um, I think, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And it, uh, it, it certainly makes it uh, more efficient and, and effective. Um, for, you know, for Todd's, for Todd's team um, in particular, but, you know, I think I have, uh, you know, my in-laws are uh, living, living in Scarborough. And then 
I also have a number of neighbors that are retirement age and, uh, you know, their, their needs for, you know, winter or indoor recreation spaces are, is certainly a, a high priority for them to stay active, um, as they, as they get older. Uh, you know, I've, I did, a, I kind of went a little rogue, um, here and did a little survey with a number of friends and, and, uh, uh family and, uh, people that live in Scarborough in particular. And, um, probably I sent it out. I don't know. I probably sent it out to like 40 or 45 people. I got 22 responses back, which is pretty good. Yeah. 50% return rate. I'll take it. Uh, I think there were 17 of them or so put the aquatic center as uh, their number one priority uh, within a community center. The second was a uh, multi-use gymnasium and uh walking track. Those were, those are pretty high, um, pretty high up on the list, but you know, another thing I, I, I certainly, you know, see the value in a senior, you know, having a dedicated senior space. I think it's uh, really important for that community. Uh, we get to be involved in a number of senior activities in Portland and it really is a, it's a heck of a community. Uh, they're really tight knit and they, they need that space um, to kind of, you know, uh, just to interact with one another and, 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 you know, stay positive about life as, uh, as things get more challenging. So, um, it's really important to have that as a piece of this. So, you know, I've got young kids, I've got a four and a six year old, and, uh, we certainly would value, it would, it would be really valuable to have, um, a space for us to go and, and, and use in, indoors. Um, you know, my wife and I play pickleball, I think, you know, having a multi-use facility and an, an indoor pickleball facility for, for instance, you know, we have that new one going into South Portland, but, um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's growing so quickly that having, a, you know, more spaces like that, I think is a, is a really uh, important and versatile thing for us to, to start exploring. And, uh, um, yeah, no, I think it's going to be, it, sh it should be great, but thanks. It's great. Just, just for the sake of shaping the conversation a little, you know, so we've talked a lot about, um, you know, aquatics and, and gym and seniors, uh, does anyone have any input on kind of school school age like yeah high school um uh age children or i mean ki kids and teens um see the use about uh you, you know their thoughts about that kind of constituencies uh, i'm not a voting member but i have a teenager and i think the library tried to address problems that i think were really part of the community center problem or lack thereof is what you look what the library looks like after school and I think the library is filled after school with kids because they have something to do after, and there's a gap, which that's not a that's not that's a huge band aid. I think, especially in this day and age, it would be great to have a space to get the kids off of their technology and have activities after school, not a place to squat in between activities, but also some somewhere to go and do something other than I think what I'm witnessing right now is everyone going home, sitting on their phones, being very seclusive, especially after COVID. Um, and I think it's important, but it would also have to be located pretty strategically if you were going to do a teen center. I think so that after school, they address it yeah. with clubs, like my kids are just getting to that clubs for what work. Yeah. But most of the clubs, there aren't very many that are athletically related. I mean that in a way, like I know they are right. doing Clark this year, but it's like there's yearbook and there's different programs like that, but there's not a lot of like, you know, dance classes. There's nothing like that they can really get into unless they go to someplace else. So you do, you, if you, anybody wants to between two 30 and four drive over and all the middle school kids walk when they're waiting to go to practices or whatever, or they're waiting for their younger sibling to get at Wentworth. Yep. They're just there and they go, they mill around the library and they go, they don't really have a place to go. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not really old enough to like, they're not going to like, <clears throat> you know, aftercare at eight corners. It's not, it's not, that's not what they're there for. So um, there is a lot, I'm not saying it's underserved. It's just, it's an opportunity. Yes. It's not, it's, you know, and, and parents are stuck. A lot of it, parents don't get to work till four, three, five o'clock. And there, there is a gap there. And it would be great to have something positive to reinforce that you go to teens and otherwise, especially if they're not just, well, I stay after school and I go to practice because I do a sport. Well, what else can, what else is there involved with? Because it is a very small segment that actually get into those and do those things. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it in the long run, with the number of kids in schools, a number of kids that can make teams and things. This is Darren, and I'm going to offer a little levity to the group. You guys are like jumping in feet first to all the major problems that everyone tries to solve. I, you know, Keith said you had all those figured out before I got here, but 
um in all seriousness <laughs> you know what kind of pool should it be should we have a pool lack of community access to school district facilities trying to come up with things for teenagers and high schools to do with that gaps time in there how do we access lack of access you guys are uh those are all hallmarks of, of communities that are going ahead and pursuing these types of facilities and in many cases can go ahead and can use these facilities to solve those problems. So um, I don't know if that makes you feel any better when you go ahead and when you hear that what you're, what you're tackling isn't common, but I guess it's making me smile a little bit on this end of the computer thinking, okay, this is a familiar record. I think, I think we know how this, how we can work with these guys and, and make this happen. So um, that's great stuff. And being kind of a former pool guy, we could spend the rest of the time talking about what a perfect pool is. And I will equate a perfect pool to the perfect water temperature. If you have it right, everyone's complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll jump in. Uh, for those who have not really experienced what it's like at the library after two o'clock from two to six, it's just a constant wave of kids and someone mentioned electronics i'm in there all the time and i see a lot of electronic use some a lot of kids are reading a lot of kids are doing their homework but uh, some of the functions that a community center can provide would be enormously valuable we have basketballs because the basketball court the outdoor court is right across the street so we give them out uh, uh, as as loners and and so kids go out there and play basketball. There's such a diversity of interests that uh, this facility would be an enormous contribution. For, uh, and if we could find a place on the municipal campus to situate it so that it was accessible for for all these kids would be fabulous. That that would be from a location point of view, number one for me would be find a place on the municipal campus. Uh, it would be take some effort, but I think we can make that work. That That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can imagine, you know, some of the burden, e even if it's adjoining and those courts, if they're not uh, remade or integrated to the community center, you know, the Probably having the community center uh, loan out the basketballs is maybe a better use of the librarian's time. So maybe not, but um, certainly it seems like some kind of um, you know co-location with uh, some of the some of the the town facilities are already there and the amenities. It certainly makes makes a, a ton of sense, and um, I'm very excited to to get into that that part and start to look at where where the opportunities are. Um, I, th I think maybe I'll turn over to Darren just to talk for a minute about the community center versus recreation center and, and trying to shape kind of discussion around that, if, if, if you wouldn't mind stepping in. Sure. So I know this goes ahead and this seems silly, but there's always this conversation of, is this a recreation center? Is it a community center? Is it a field house? Um, in many cases, how you go ahead and how you reference the building early can impact the success of the long-term uh, project. But, you know, when when we're working with clients across the country, we, we typically would classify a community center as a location that people can go into, similar to a library. You don't necessarily have to pay to go into it. There's a variety of spaces that once you get in there that could accommodate dance or it could accommodate a therapy activity or a meal or and, and there's typically gymnasium, potentially indoor turf associated with that as well. But there's not any kind of daily, there's no transaction, right? There's no daily admission. There's no, there's no fee that you're paying to use the facility outside of going ahead and participating in programs. We also have a recreation center, which is very much transactional, which is you go ahead and you go to the building and you pay your daily admission fee or you pay, you've paid your monthly or annual membership and you go past the paywall. And when you get past it, there's typically fitness, there's typically group exercise spaces, there's typically multiple gyms, there's in many cases, there's a pool. If there's not a pool, you'll hear on the first day you open, where's your pool? Um, we're seeing indoor turf, especially in your region of the country, more and more. Um, but it's very transactional. Uh, and that's not to say that people have to have a membership or pay a daily admission to participate in programs, but that's sort of how a facility feels. Um, you have a little bit of a hybrid 
uh, which is you walk into the facility and as you go forward, if you go to the left, you're able to access some classrooms and meeting rooms and maybe there's a branch of the library, maybe there's a senior dedicated senior space, uh, maybe there's a warming kitchen or a full commercial kitchen. And then if you go to the right, that's where your paywall is at with a lot of those other kinds of amenities that are that are back there. The, the last option that we're going ahead and we're seeing is more of the field house approach. Um, so that there's really not access to the building unless programs are taking place in the building. And it's usually two to three to four uh, basketball courts. It could be four, six, or eight volleyball courts, and uh, typically a large section of turf and maybe some meeting rooms, and maybe there's a walking jogging track. But in your guys' mind's eye, as you're going ahead and sort of thinking about this facility in the future, and, and we all probably have pre preconceived ideas of what should be in it, you know, wh which direction do you feel like you're leaning more in? I think we're leaning more towards a community center, not necessarily a dedicated recreation center. And I don't think there's been any discussion about the type of a field house approach. Field house is I think it's kind of in between both of because we've had a lot of we've done a lot of survey. I'm like, I would pay for this. I would pay for this. I would pay fee. Like it was right in the thing. They would rather see that through taxes. So I think part of it has to be somewhat recreation center based. But I also see a huge need. What we just talked about that a lot of as you just walk in the front door, there's somewhere to go. I, yeah. So I, I think it's got to be maybe a balance. I don't know I how to make that hybrid. balance. I think a little between. Right. But I feel that's like I could not. About. Yeah. Yeah. If we can build a field house, I think feel like that's more like someone wants to come build a field house in Scarborough and rent it out, go for it. There's plenty of space in towns and clubs that can do that. Um, I just I kind of get the feeling though that I don't maybe I'm wrong based on the feedback we've gotten. I don't know if we could make it all free all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's really the approach that people are willing to fund. So I think it has to be hybrid, but I could I could be wrong, but that's just, like there's just a cool. financial model wouldn't necessarily support that. The community might, center. You know, the community Absolutely. Center. So like, but maybe the hybrid, there's yeah, I think there's definitely an opportunity when we're talking, you're not gonna really charge a if you have a teen clubhouse room, are you really gonna charge five bucks every time a kid walks? I mean, how do you do that versus if you're taking a recreations class and aquatics class, you know, you can have a membership to go swim, you can rent out the field house to groups. I think there's totally areas between those, but in my yeah. previous world, it was called the Wisconsin Community Center. And after I got there a few years, we, we didn't change the marble on the front of the building, but we marketed it as Community Recreation Center because we did have a membership. We did have, you know, classes were part of that fee. And so we had to make those kind of community good choices. What was part of your membership? How do we let people free into the building? It was kind of the same model. You went to the left, and that's where the senior center was. And it was free to go in. And that's where we had lunch and meals. But I also had as a rental space. And you checked in at the front desk and you get to the fitness room or the gym and the pool. And whether you're being a member, whether you're paying a day, fee, whether they're holding a public event, it was just walk in. The building was set up that you could access those spaces or those spaces could be kind of cut off if you needed to be. Um, and then that allowed us to make fiscal choices around how we were going to sustain the model. Yeah. And um and so that's where I think these, you know, with, with Darren's help and, and especially on the modeling side of the revenues, where those choices are. And we kind of talked a little bit about that at our previous meeting when we talked about when we looked at the program spaces. But then the question is that they'll really help us with is how big, what's too much, what's not enough, you know, and what's going to sustain the population needs where, you know, I'll use the pool, for example, if we're talking about a six lane pool, when really the data shows, and I'm making this completely up, it should be eight lanes, you know, right. to support the high school support, you know, whatever it needs to be, that's what these guys will help us rationalize for you to make choices to say, this is the fit that we can sustain now with maybe some design flexibility for 10 years down the road, or we go hunting for a partner that we can build a field house onto it, but that's a private entity in the backside or something. So that's just my I, kind of hybrid approach. So I the, think the, the research that we did based on what people want, community center versus what they're willing to pay for, recreation center, it, in the end, it, it's a hybrid all day, every day. The, the yeah. previous edge complex, that was going to be a little both, right? Because there was going to be a private field house used to some of that space, right? That, well, that was kind of gray, and we didn't get to the final end, but okay. it was, there was definite private amenities that we were not trying to cross the line on, right. but also trying to figure out that spot where, you know, our facility went heavier on the aquatic side of things and 
lesser on the community, and tell me if I'm wrong, lesser on the community center aspects, higher on the core, and then some complementary things to connect the two. So it was really kind of a, a different model yeah. to also yeah. what they were they doing. They wanted a nice rink. I mean, that was yeah, really they the wanted driving fields out that. They were going to yeah. take those and rent those themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. as I recall, they, they were in business to make money. They were yeah. monetizing it. They were going to build what uh, they had a, a high degree of confidence they could rent and, yeah. and make money on it. And we were going to have access to those facilities for Right. Certain programs, certain things, but they would have it for other concerns. Time. Time. Yeah, you were going to get access when they weren't making money, which was going to be very difficult for you to populate those <laughs> programs. Uh, <laughs> some, some of that's true. We we were well, we hadn't gotten all the way down to that, but we 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 had talked about you know having the first options four times right. for, for certain certain yeah. times of the year for like the hockey team, for example. Yeah. We were going to have a yeah, school sports treatment. having preferred yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, and, and that's another thing. Like ending. with the pool, we've talked about the the direct side. Also, the competition side. Like, is the town of Scarborough now hosting competition? No, you're probably renting it to somebody, or you know, or maybe you are. But then you've also got the school in there. Like, the school teams are going to have access to it. That <clears throat> they're a different entity, but they're going to kind of be lumped in with the town stuff. And what do they get versus what citizens can get? Same problem we have in the schools, but hopefully it's it's in a community center building and not. It's not, you know, the school that makes decision. Right. You cut away the travel ways. time. You cut away all those things. Yep. They're there now. But they can also then run, you know, there'll be certain Saturdays and Sundays where there's big meets and there's lots of people there. Right. And they're going to take over other aspects of the building. And that's just going to be one of the ways to fund it, though. Right. And that's why, Darren, I think we shared with you, but when we talked about programming space, you know, I think we all came to kind of a conclusion. Our kind of launching pad would be looking at the two pool model where you had a competition pool size, shape, totally undetermined yeah. and then some sort of rec aspect. So in my previous world, there was a shared water pool. So you're right. The temperature was never right. And um, the, the, the access was never enough because when yeah. the swimmers were in there, the parents wanted it. And, and so it was, you couldn't get into certain things. So um, I think that's where looking at access and the frequency of that access is going to be really important to make sure residents can get what they want and not say, I can go do water therapy, but it's one class a week because I right. can't get there after five o'clock. But I yeah. think we can fund some of the community part, though, can also be funded by renting out the field house part if you have it for an AU basketball tournament for an afternoon or renting out the, and you can do some of those things which help fund the free side. You just have to right. balance that aspect yeah. of whatever it is. And then that's where you get to lean on right. the town staff to say, okay, well, this is fair for the community and this is right. funding for it. So let's go together. And I, I really think hybrid, though. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. Uh, a couple of things that I, I'm hearing and in, in some some sayings or some mantras that you're going to hear throughout this process. And I'm in and if I'm I hope I don't uh, upset anyone with what I'm about to say, but we're going to work with you and talk about facility program and what's going to be in the facility. But you also have a group in front of you that is going to share with you um, if a space gets too small, but you're trying to do everything, just don't do it. Right. I can tell you right now that if you start talking about having a fitness component that's going to go ahead and drive membership and you start talking about less than 2000 square feet dedicated to that, my comment's going to be just don't do it because you're going to be you're going to be undersized from the day you open the door. The other thing that I, I want to share is that these facilities, by their very nature, you want to make them multi-purpose, but you don't want to make them so multi-purpose that, be, that they become purposeless. So you don't want to get to the point where you've got so many things going on that you're just like, what is this anymore? And then the last thing that I'm going to share with you is based on this, this sort of hybrid model is you're right. There's opportunities to host basketball and volleyball. There might be some opportunities to host pickleball. There might be opportunities to host swimming. There might be opportunities. My, my brother-in-law does you know youth robotics. There might be a high school robotics competition that you want to host in your gym. You're going to, with an operation like that, have to balance how much access do we go ahead and do we make sure we maintain for our residents and for our members versus how much we want to chase as it relates to revenue with events and those types of things, which can be, as your facility becomes more popular, can go ahead and evolve over time. So those are some things that, again, we're at the very beginning um, and this is always awesome to talk about all these fun things, but those are some things that I, I just wanted to say so for the group to keep in mind as we start to go down this rabbit hole and begin to talk about all the different awesome things that we can do with the facility. Thanks. Something that I was 
uh, hope we could talk about briefly. I know we have, uh, you know, some members of the previous committee and also members of the, of the town council. Uh, just looking at the uh, the way that the past uh, ad hoc committee played out, it, it seemed like it was the project was or the your charge was finishing at like the most inopportune time. I think you were scheduled to present on like March twentieth, twenty twenty, and it was very hard to to find where you know like to, as an outsider find out really what the discussion was around it. So I I was hoping to find out a little bit about how the uh, the previous charge landed with the town council. And, you know, I know that there was the kind of edge component. So maybe we could focus a little bit on the self-built component. That was obviously probably, you know, more, more exciting for us at the moment. Um, but that's, that's one piece that'd be interesting to hear about. You know, there's, there's the financial portion, there was the program, and then th there was the, the site, site selection. So if anyone has any, any comments about really, you know, what had traction there and what things were people getting excited about and, and also, you know, how, how widely was it circulated and, and did, did word get out, was it marketed in any way? Yeah, and a little bit, I guess um, it was, there was never a self-built component to that committee's work. It was all based on that um, Massachusetts company that wanted to build an ice arena and have enough land uh, to put some outdoor fields there too. Um, and we were kind of glomming on. It was kind of like we had half the building and they had the other half kind of a thing. Um, the financial arrangements, we did a fairly in-depth financial analysis of how it might work and what the cost might be. Um, sharing the programming, putting in some, some membership fees and what the memberships might look like, how many people we thought we might have as members, um, what the savings on the some of the school facilities or, or outside facilities that the school department was renting might be realized, particularly with the high ice arena and preferred, preferred rates with that. Um, it was it never got to the point where it was marketed for a, a valid vote or anything like that. It just kind of ended. Um, I don't even remember how COVID squashed how it. it. COVID, 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 COVID squashed it. Okay. COVID, COVID didn't let that final well, piece. One of, the, one of the biggest things about the last one was from the get-go, the financial arrangement that was being proposed was really not beneficial. Like it really wasn't a healthy... Advantageous. It wasn't advantageous whatsoever for the town. And so it, it took us a little bit to figure that out. And then what a little bit of time to figure out what to do it. And then at the last in the ninth inning, someone th there was a new proposal that had that continued on. I think we would have spent a lot more time. Um, it was a quick comparison of a building being built on town owned property versus you took, not. You took yep. the same footprint, and the same package that you were looking right. at the private. We did and just and drove it to the public on a public piece of property yeah. with some of those finances. It wasn't as in-depth as the first part, right? but there was a little bit of, to make sure that, but I think it was being done to say the deal was either fair or if we went on our own, we have control and it's, and it's, and what the cost is. So, right. And I think the, the conclusion from that analysis was that it wasn't that great of a deal with that company. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. The option two looked better on face, right. owning it, managing, and making decisions along the way. Yeah. For the same price. For the same price or close. And using different financial vehicles to, to look at that. So I think yeah. that was the kind of the back end of it. But COVID Keith really was what stopped that. And we actually came back and yeah. chair did it. Presentation was like six months, eight months, a year later. It was a while. It was a while that it was a quick presentation after the fact. Yeah. Yeah, I remember looking for the the minutes from that meeting, and it just they just didn't exist. And and I looked at the date, and I, I pretty quickly realized why that was. Um, yeah. Do they have yeah. this? Yeah, they have. Yeah. yeah. The, the 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 celebration of it, Keith, really was. The presentation was more to dot the T and, cross, and dot the I and cross the T, but we weren't really any movement moving forward after that. It was more to say, thank you for all this hard work. Yeah. We're in a different spot right now after COVID. Yeah, yep. it's yeah. all in there. I would say if there's any takeaway, I think it's uh, check the, the box in terms of a, a potential partnership. And we realized that that was not advantageous. Yeah. And what, what appeared to be uh, the, the approach to take would be a self-built. And here we are three and a half years later, yeah. reconvening, so, kind of pursuing that and digging in much deeper. Right. Yeah. I think sure. the, a, a lot of the work that we did is still valid and valuable, yeah. um, particularly around the aquatic center, the, the track, the 
amount of gym space that we determined that we thought we might need the the inclusion of um, some dedicated senior space. Um, I think we kind of are hitting the same mm -hmm. highlights yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, that's that's true. You know, so just that leads nicely onto you know, kind of the moving forwards, right? Like put the edge behind us. That that was a a good check, and now you know we have a a, a new charge. Um, I guess regarding the the program. What elements do people feel like are are really you know es essential um, if that's really kind of coming together? I mean, like there's obviously a program put together. I feel like that that was um, you know really driven pretty hard by trying to provide a certain number of uses or or spaces to the developer because they needed to price something, and maybe it wasn't. Uh, um, as wide ranging, you know, it's kind of like when you're a hammer type of thing, it was very uh, aquatics and gym focused when it was being priced by the kind of the edge development portion. And so maybe there's an opportunity to step back and, and say like, what, what do we want to hold on to from the previous uh, study uh, in terms of the program that that seems that seems essential or do we not even are we not there yet? Are we we're stepping further back? I mean, I think that you know, last meeting we and I sent them the you know the kind of review of the two surveys that have happened since that point and that kind of program order of people what they ranked it. I think if the one thing that I feel like we missed, not missed, but it just wasn't a priority for a lot of reasons in the previous work is that community element of supporting the general public. Where I know numerous times I was you know can't walk down a hallway with a hockey bag and not knock a senior over at the same time. Like that kind of feel and what it lived and how it functioned wasn't a priority because it wasn't a charge with the last one. And so I think those type of things for me is where, how do you make those profitable centers feel like a community center that anybody can go in, have access, but yet we've made good business decisions to, and then meet some of the needs that we haven't been able to touch. Um, and so that that's the piece for me is to being able to um, look at some of those other areas. There you go, the ranking yeah. sheet that and we reviewed. Part so. of that charge too, though, was the fact that part of their wanting to deal with you was they wanted the hockey rink in the fields. The town might need a hockey rink in fields, but that was never part of the public. That was, they were going to keep that part and then build this part for the other part of it. So like whether those were or weren't considered, they weren't like the towns. So that's a different thing. Like, you know, the hockey rink and they, they just weren't going to be part of the town might have access to some of those things, but we weren't building that part. So now, you know, so obviously I think a lot of what was focused on was, the aquatic center, the gym space, because we know we need that. Well, they were taking care of two other pieces of it, you know, that might not ever be part of this facility, but at some point the town might want to do next year, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, or they become part of it. And I don't know, they didn't seem to rank quite as high, but I don't know, I can't remember honestly doing the survey, you know, where the hockey rank or I don't even know if we asked about outdoor fields and things. I don't think they no. were in it. No, we didn't. No, because that was happening because anyway. Because yeah, yeah. it was yeah. happening without it. So it, yeah. that might be the only piece that maybe everything else that was in there were all things the town brought to the table. I thought, no, this is what we want to see in our building. Those two pieces are the ones that I don't know if we have the data on because the, they were going to be there, but not by our apps. The one thing that did kind of rank fairly high in our survey work that we did was workout space. So weights that kind of thing. And then we did actually, after hearing a lot of testimony from Mr. Foley and others and that there was plenty of gym space available in town, the schools didn't really need additional gym workout spaces. gym space. Yeah. So we kind of really, I don't know if we scaled it out, but we certainly scaled it back. Yeah. Can you ask the question again? I'm confused. So the question they're asking is, you know, based on the survey and stuff, are there other are amenities that were in the previous work that didn't rank as high that we should be considering. You but know. you raised something that you thought. You... I think it's the community space. In my mind, when you're talking co community and recreation, yeah. our previous one was all about probability and rec high, 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 high recreation. It wasn't a community room with a, with a warming kitchen so you could hold big events. It wasn't meeting space. It wasn't. It wasn't necessarily a senior space. It wasn't, no, it was no, it was wasn't a senior athletic. or a teen yeah. space. It was all about, did it look like a profitable space? And then. You know how many of those boxes did it tick on the community side and i so to me i think those are the pieces that we we this it's important to that was more field house ish and but taking some maybe some taking some pressure off the town with some of the spaces they could provide but it wasn't no, right. i don't i didn't get much of it from the sense from reading through it in a part of surveys that it was like 
oh, we should put the senior center in there. It's more like, well, then we'll build the school and we'll, we'll figure out something senior center around that. Like, you know, I just don't think it was and then a lot changed community. this building. A lot of things changed. Yeah, yeah. it's a different model. It's, a, yeah. it's totally different. It was a lot of child care. Well, you, yeah, well, they just, they're going to rent out child care. Well, in their model, they wanted the kids to get there after school, have child care, they yeah. were building a tutoring center, and then they were going to, their teams could go to the ice at four or five o'clock. So they saw it as a vehicle to get to their rentable space. Yes. Yeah. 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 My recollection is that that uh, whole program analysis was pretty thorough. And I, I don't mm -hmm. disagree that it was largely focused on uh, the financial aspects mm -hmm. in, in large part. Good point. Clearly informed by the survey work as well. Yeah. So I, I would suggest that you don't cast that aside, that you look at that and maybe work from that. Yeah. And I think that's the other was, yeah. the other takeaway, my recollection is, is the space that the town was looking at itself was 72,000 square feet. And I think maybe it's my own opinion, but I I my takeaway was that it seemed like a lot of space. Yeah. And so I, I don't know whether you can effectively do all the programs that you want to do in something less that a lot of that was pool the aquatics was um 30,000 yeah because yeah. it was 12 lanes wasn't it but they wanted to yeah they, it, they were i mean we had a warming kitchen multi-purpose community room which was going to be the senior room as well but um the locker rooms and the aquatic center were right and we had a, a shared huge senior team room which is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that works. So maybe it's really like important to scale it back to something, right size it to yeah. you know what we actually need as opposed to. From, from a, because in their mind, too, though, they were looking at, okay, on days can... that we can get the whole thing, we're going to fill this for profitability. So they wanted, I'm sure they were driving for bigger spaces because the more teams you put in, the more people that can come and hang around in between and buy food and whatever else is going on helps fund when they have big things and those would be days the town probably wouldn't have well, had, but, but Dennis, my recollection is the committee was quite strong in its own opinions and, and wasn't though that might was clearly their goal their I think, goal yeah i think the yeah. committee itself really said no these are things we think we yeah. need for our own purposes there right. was shared spaces yes but um the other stuff was really driven by the serving That's work right. and the committee what do you think to your oh sorry yeah. i just say to just answer the question i i don't i think we rely on not cast aside the, the data that we have i think yeah. i think we have it's, it's it's valuable data it's recent and then and there was a more recent even more recent survey which which Updated. basically validated yeah. the, pre the previous yeah. work yeah. and i think we did one 15 years ago that had basically the same result yeah. so it hasn't changed right so maybe Maybe the size and the and the makeup of the multi-use spaces might be a little bit different, but the the core tenants are there. That's what yeah. I was going to say. I think everything is hit. It's just a matter of yeah. prioritizing now that how big and what it how you know how they all mingle. Yeah. yeah. It, it, if I could offer one um, observation about the way this the previous survey was conducted, you know, it, it definitely asked questions about um, certain space types and. You know, it was obviously driven you know pretty hard on on um, the athletic side, and so you see uh, you know a lot of positive response coming from um, you know from from uh, school age children, families with school age children, and then it really tapers towards you know like the older population, and then it, it was almost like split towards towards the you know end of the spectrum. And yeah. what's interesting is, in part, the the way the questions were formulated: w Would you like a this type of pool? Would you like a fitness room would you like um a multi-purpose room basically the the questions for the athletics were very specific and very room based um and my my supposition is that uh they're not the kinds of questions that it, it wasn't helping people envision the type of way that they would use the space so like if you asked would you like a space where you could meet once a week to play mahjong or would you like the type of space where uh, a teen could come and hang with their friends and and do e-gaming or you know like esports and things like that you know there's a different kind of qualitative question like that and some of those spaces might be the same space but you're talking about you know the activities versus the programming in a strictly architectural <laughs> sense and so i i think because it was so athletic based you got a lot of responses versus you, you know if if you uh if it was, are you looking for a space to walk during the winter time, or if you're looking for a space to do aqua therapy, you know, you're not ask if you want a, uh, you know, a recreational pool, which feels very different than like, oh, you know, I kind of would like that space during the winter, and so I, I think trying to you know get a little bit at 
what are some of the activities and some of the constituencies who would who would be using this? I think it's like it's pretty important to understand that. And it's not that you know when when you look at uh, I mean I think one exercise which might be pro would, would, would be really productive was is almost you're listing a lot of the activities that you see happening in the town at other locations or activities you wish were happening in the in the town uh, and trying to consolidate that in, into a list and then trying to group that into the types of spaces that could accommodate that right because I mean like a multi a multi use space that could be divided into three smaller rooms you know could handle you know like five eighths of this list and then several other ones you know it, it looks like we're driving more towards smaller cellular rooms which could do lessons and uh tutoring or mm -hmm. but it, or music lessons and or uh, senior consultations you know those could all be a smaller more cellular room but you you didn't ask do you want a bunch of small office spaces or small rooms you know it's, it's a different kind of question when you're when you look at the survey and so that was that was one thing the survey data is really really great but i feel like it 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 definitely elicited a certain type of response from the people who took it um that i think it, you know using the the knowledge of the people in, in this room to to kind of dig into a little more what's driving some of those you know desires and and already i think we're getting that because you know like the amount the time we've talked about you know the, the teens and and the the seniors and that got i don't know if you see my cursor the scene the senior and team room i believe was added after the fact it's 1500 square feet and was added you know after you know like the very end i think it was uh it was even marked up on the pdf that like oh we should add a senior and team room because i, I know it was the you know trying to do apples to apples comparison but you know the, I, I could see you know this this portion here really growing and being a, a bigger component of of the community center not at the not to give short shrift to these other portions but you know everything a lot of things we've talked about don't are, are not recognized in kind of the athletic program right yeah agreed um, i i if I could just jump in real quick, um, you would think coming from my background that I would be like, we must have a senior center portion, you know, and I know most of the, se the most of the senior seniors that I know, they don't want to just walk in a room with tables and decide what they're going to do. And, you know, it's more about spaces that can handle programming for seniors. Yeah. You know, and that mm -hmm. programming could be anything. It could be <clears throat> teens one day, it could be seniors another day, it could be, um, you know, education, you know, um, it could be all sorts of things. So I'm definitely not thinking, wow, we need this massive senior center portion uh, or, you, you know, it, it's more around programming and envisioning all the different things that seniors, you know, you know, seniors are, are, you know, it's not about bingo, <laughs> you know, they're, they're so active and, and want to learn and move and exercise. And, you know, so it, I feel like it's more about programming. I know Scarborough, I'm not too, too familiar with the senior programming that Scarborough uh, provides. I know we do. And I've looked at it a little bit when I was um, thinking about joining the committee. I think you know, we definitely have it. And I'm thinking, wow, how that can really grow in all of the spaces, as long as we're thinking about that and not necessarily a room with, you know, tables, you know, and that's the senior center room, you know. So I'm agreeing with you. I, I think that that's what we're seeing on a, on a national level is that the dedicated senior space is going ahead and getting smaller and smaller and smaller because there's a larger and larger portion of the senior population that the minute you call it a senior center or a senior program, they're not going to participate. They're much more willing to have a membership at your recreation center or your community facility, but um, don't, don't call me a senior and don't put me in that room. Yeah, the library has studied this extensively. And uh, and while it's adults, it's older people. Uh, we don't have any senior center status to our meeting rooms, but we have a program director who's putting out programs, non-rec programs that mm -hmm. are active all the time. We, we don't have anywhere near the space we need. So this is a great, and if we look at this community, this community, is going to continue to grow. I would hate to think that we would propose to build a facility that is undersized at the outset. Within a few years, we're saying, 
God, we wished we had been a little bit more foresightful in, in building it. Uh, and I'm not trying to propose that we go crazy with the budget, but I think this is a great opportunity for doing it right. And I think right means fulfilling all the needs of this community. Uh, and I mean, the hub has demonstrated uh, non-REC style activity. Uh, our program director says we're off the charts at the library with with stuff. A lot of seniors. Uh, I mean, you're in there in the knitting club or the sketching club, and they're all they're all seniors. We just just so everybody knows when our senior coordinator. Uh, took a new position. We recategorize and re-advertise as an active adult coordinator, which we just filled. We started on Monday. So we're starting to see that trend where, again, we've got a demographic and that's kind of 75 plus that likes their traditional activities. But her challenge once she gets her feet on her knees was how do we, you know, I'm getting into that 55 plus group. How do we, that active adult, how do we, how do we create activities around people that are still working, you know, and, and meet that. So yeah, that that's a definite trend that's coming. Yeah. Um, I think we, I think we really need to lean on you, Todd, and this new person to, to to communicate to us what what the asks are, what people are not just seniors, but across the board, what people are are asking for, what type of activities are we getting inquiries about that we can't book a program for because we don't have space. I think that's and another I, opportunity when you go ahead and when you start talking about public engagement is to make sure that. Maybe you don't talk about facility components when you're doing that and you talk about it more from a program perspective. So if you're envisioning an open house and you've got various boards around the around the room and people can go ahead and say, well, I think we need more adult programming. And then they've got post-it notes where they can post the different kinds of adult programming. And I think we need more as it relates to aquatics. And you get to the end of that list and wow, it seems like we're pushing more towards maybe we need to have more leisure and less competitive. So I think that there's ways that we can go ahead and we can drill down to that to make sure that the facilities are right size for a wide variety. Because what I've heard so far is that, yes, the sports aspects, the active aspects are important, but we need to be able to accommodate some of those other activities that are out there that still encompass a pretty significant portion of our population. Actually, you can work in the timing because... Some of those events can happen during the day. When other groups can't be there. You know, <clears throat> purpose spaces is where it's at. I mean, yeah. You can have a yeah. real robust program if you can use something. I don't know if we want the team slash senior center in the same spot, but, right. you know, like if you can run senior programs, people that are retired or have space during the day to do, you can still have some evening space for those too and then use it for other purposes as you get to different times and really add a lot of opportunity provided you can staff and everything else. Yeah. That. I really like the concept. I'm just, my head's kind of spinning now and I'll, and I'll throw it out there. I mean, I would be happy, you know, alongside the committee if we were interested in, in hosting an event, a night here that says, come, you know, show us what activities you want. We're not talking about rooms or pools or gyms. I like the idea on the activity base. Just come talk about if you could get a program or an activity, what would that be? And that would help define the space. Ultimately. Yeah. And, and, yeah. This, and work this with you guys into this timeline. We could host yeah. that one evening or Saturday or something in, that works in this timeline to say, it would be very upfront with it. We're not talking about how many lane pools or diving wells, but if you said, yeah. I want diving, that dictates a space. If you want scuba dive, you know, they'll bring activities and help design yeah. the space around that. You can go ahead and you can allude to spaces, right? What are things that you would like to be able to do in a gymnasium that you either can't access now or you don't, there's not time for? Um, what would you? What kind of programs would you like to participate in a pool? What kind of what kind of adult focused programs would you like? And that can there's some of it where you might have to mention a component, but you're not saying what would you do with a four court gymnasium that could accommodate four basketball courts, 12 pickleball courts and eight volleyball, <laughs> eight volleyball courts with an elevated raised track. You know, you're not, you're not drilling down like that, but the answers to those questions are going to spell that out. Yeah, that's right. And I think that 
you know, like, like that, trying to accommodate the the uses and the activities, you know, which have a temporal aspect, you know, where they, they happen some the same space can host you know, obviously multiple activities and at different times of day, you know, you might find out that the Venn diagram is you know, nearly overlapping except for a certain components, but that might be able to be solved by, you know, by um, soft components or non, um, you know, integrated infrastructure, et cetera, or something that can be portable or brought in. And all of a sudden now you're tightening up on, on the way all of these activities overlap. Um, so Todd, actually, I think that'd be, I think that would address a lot of the, the pieces that um, were missing a little bit from, from the previous uh, survey and, and, and try to identify really kind of build out that, um, that other portion of the, of the program and see this come into a little bit more of a balance in, in terms of, you know, like a, uh, a balance between areas that are open to the public versus that are revenue generating and, and are behind some kind of payroll paywall or, or or have a different you know sensibility to them. I think another thing that if you go and we're I don't want to push us too far down the rabbit hole when we go ahead and do that, but as long as everyone's kind of percolating on that idea, I think another question that you would want to try and answer in an open house format like that is what's important. What's it? Imp what is important to have around this facility? And so where you could go with that is people might talk about adjacent green space. People might talk about trail connectivity. People might talk about public transit connectivity. They could talk about a lot of different things. But I think asking a question like that could go ahead and could also begin to point you in the direction as it relates to some site evaluations. I think it's an awesome idea, Todd. Just a comment. I'm not sure if it's fairly helpful for the program discussion, but it, it may be a design consideration. I guess it's my personal observation and desire. One thing I've noticed living in Scarborough for 16 years now is that it's really hard to, to meet people, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you have kids in schools, your best chance is in the island at Hannaford. Let's face yeah, it. It's true. So <laughs> having a space that is causes us to collide intermittently, going through the door, whatever the case may be, and 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 maybe that we we have we uh, increase those chances by having broad programming for all you know for many, um, but also just from a design consideration, spaces that are just kind of open and unassigned that mm -hmm. you can. Have a seat and have a chat or something. And and I know it doesn't pay the bills, but um, you know, at the end of the day, it's not all about the money. There's a community good here that I think um we'd be foolish not to be mindful of. And and talking about that. creating yeah. that living room for the community. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about, and I think you guys got when we, we did that first kind of run through on space programming that Jill put together. The first consideration was the entrance, right? Yeah. How does it feel when you come in? Is it a lobby that everybody can walk in? And it's like, hey, Tom, how you doing? Or, excuse me, sir, where are you going? Those are two different, yeah, two different vibes. Yeah. Welcoming and, and comfortable, right? Or I'm, I'm, I'm separated and I'm dropping off my, you know, like just yeah. people can go in, hey, Tom, let's meet, have a meeting, we'll talk about, we'll get a cup of coffee and just shoot the breeze. Like, yeah, what, what does that feel like? Yeah, the so, space that after the group gets done playing pickleball, that they migrate out into the lobby with their <laughs> coffee cups and they, you know, go ahead and hang out for a half hour and mm -hmm. meet all the other people that are walking in the building. And yeah, you're really talking about that living room, that inviting space, the gathering space. We, you know, I, I, I'm probably talking too much and I apologize for that, but you're right. Outside of school district, recreation, recreation centers, community centers, parks, are the other space in your community that drive people to meet one another and create those new friendships and relationships. So um, it's very on point for what you guys are talking about doing. I, I know this is, um, so one, one thing that gets me kind of excited about, about the project is that, you know, now that it's freed from kind of like the athletic mandate and we can find, uh, you know, that the right site is, is having this really be kind of like a knuckle within the community. And so there's a, a tremendous amount of, you know, six to nine months a year exterior programming that can be associated with it. Um, I noticed that, you know, I looked in the Parks and Rec uh, survey and, you know, they're they're thinking of, um, you know, one recommendation was to get rid of the bocce courts. They're underutilized and not well maintained, but, you know, they're underutilized and not not well maintained because they're, they're not really near anything else. It would be a different story if there were a cafe that was adjacent to the bocce courts that, 
you know, had a aperitivo at six o'clock and you could play bocce and it was right outside of the, of the you know, and the, and the cafe opened out onto it like that. Or if it was the community kitchen that opened down to it and, and it was right near there. Or let's say this is located near the exterior, you know, the, the outdoor skating rink. You know, this could be a place where uh, if there's ability to rent the skates at the community center, you know, that kind of like exactly with the library and the basketball uh, courts, you know, like think about it as like a campus, the community garden. I know there's a kind of a, a distributed community garden uh, uh, within Scarborough. Yeah, you know, there's some uh, at the at churches and there's some on other uh, town properties. You know, this, this, this could, that could be an element where there's an indoor portion, which is uh, using the same adult ed classrooms or the multi-space where there could be, you know, uh, lectures about gardening. And then right outside you go out and, and do the dig or, you know, if there's children's activities where, you know, there's an inside and outdoor component. So just think about this as, uh, uh, as those, those activities as, as being kind of not just with outside, outside of the, the boundary of the building itself. Some of these can happen on the site, you know, if it's fields that have maybe not a strictly athletic use or, or even, you know, covered outdoor space uh, is, is a popular and nice amenity, whether it's at the entrance or it's something that is, you know, bookable and, and it could be, um, you know, something that that has a relationship with the building, although it maybe it's not the building itself is, is something that gets me really excited about uh, the, the opportunities where it's 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 these these pieces that are all coming together and, and working around it and multiplying the amount of program that can that can happen within it. So we're at an hour and a quarter, and I, I know we kind of had made a decision as a group to try to keep our meeting to an hour and a half or so as best as possible. We have a few other items to talk about on the agenda. So I'll just ask the UTL folks to maybe wrap up this section for us and uh, give us our takeaways. Yeah, we'll do. This has been really great. Of course, we got to about a quarter of everything I plan to talk about. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but it, but that's great. This is um, it's really great that everyone's so involved. Obviously, as a volunteer, you're taking your time to be part of this, and so it, it's really just so so heartening. Um, you know, I think there's, I, I love the idea um, of working with Todd to try to uh, shape some kind of sh a, you know activity charrette we might call it, <laughs> where we try to get more ideas about like. Um, uh, w w what activities could be in the building so that we can shape the physical program and find out you know, where there are overlaps and how we could use it. And then also, I think it, it's worth um, kind of the next, the next step would be, you know, maybe drawing on, um, you know, some of the, the knowledge in, in the room about other groups that maybe we should be either reaching out to or at least acknowledging or understanding, you know, where they're where they're working, whether it's senior or teen groups or after school activities, and really start to to see, you know, like develop a matrix. So, you know, here's here's our constituents. You know, they they may be coming into our our building if they had space, and and trying to identify really kind of what is the prospectus for this, you know, whether access activities or or some of the groups. Um, wow. Um, I'm not sure if it's even worth getting into some of these portions no. at the moment. No. <laughs> I will just share with the group that at our next meeting, we're, it will either be myself or one of my associates. I might be on a plane at the time. We should have some demographic work done on the community and should be able to go ahead and start talking with you about percentage of participation and population uh, market for various activities. And we'll start talking about components and revenue generation and cost to cost to run versus revenue generation and those kinds of things. So there's some of that other fun, exciting stuff that's going to happen. But this conversation tonight has been amazing. Great. Um, and then just looking really briefly at the design schedule, you know, we're scheduled to meet on, on 10, 26. Um, and um, we of course have an idea of what we want to talk about. I think we're already getting, uh, perhaps a more productive uh, agenda. And so I'm going to take some time to re rethink about this. I think it is worth talking briefly about whether or not the uh, shooting for a an open house or community engagement at a, at a more kind of site and program level, you know, maybe some of the, um, what would you call it, like focus group work that we could do with Todd and 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 his uh, his team could happen in the background and then developing uh, developing that into something that's maybe got got like a broader um, uh, a broader and, and more marketed um, outreach for, to it. Um, does what are people's thoughts about targeting towards the middle of December for this to happen? Is that a a bad time of year? A bad time for the 
project or does this seem like a, a reasonable uh, option to work towards? It certainly seems like we could begin to develop something that's that's worth going out to the community to get their feedback on. Open house on December 14th. That's pretty close to the holidays. Is that, is that what you're saying? He's just yeah, looking at correct. based on yeah. what's the time that would be better. Just thinking like, you're right, that's getting worse. Yeah. Okay. The seventh. Pushing it up a week, yeah. up a week, yeah. or back yeah. after the holidays. I don't yeah. know. I'm I'm going to share this and Keith is going to throw something at me just with the number of projects that we've done those open house events trying to do them between Thanksgiving and end of the year it, it feels like it gets it gets lost and doesn't get yeah. the attention that maybe it needs it might be one of those where if we've got some kind of public input process developed that we work through it with the group at that point so it can get launched after the first of the year but it's your guys schedule and it's your guys project that's just the what my experience has been with that time frame from trying to get input from the public i think that seems reasonable we could it give us more time to develop you know a kind of smaller focus group um alongside todd you know through through the fall um i mean it's already the middle of october amazingly and I'd rather create more public input options, you know what I mean? And do smaller groups if, you know, to gather stuff along the way. So. Yeah. You know, what was interesting is, I, you know, just I'll, you know, I'll try to keep this really brief. What was interesting it is interesting to read the, the comments, the, the negative comments of people who are non-supporters uh, in the previous survey. And I think, you know, like this process is really going to leave, uh, you know, leave them of uh, of some of their issues and some were, you know, seeing seeing this questionnaire about what types of spaces you would like in, in the facility. And people were, were freaked out that they were not part of a, a longer process to kind of mm -hmm. develop that. And I think, you know, here's the opportunity to cut to, you know, this is another piece in the long chain of, of bringing the, the public involved um, into it. Um, okay. I had on our meeting schedule, we were meeting on December 7th and then the 21st right. and the 4th, but I don't see the 21st on this schedule. The 14th isn't on the schedule. Yeah. Okay. I have the 21st as well. I just yeah. have the 21st and the 4th. Every other week. Right. Yeah. I think it just got added in as the open house. As the open house. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was just an extra date. That okay. we can, yeah, yeah but the 21st is not here at all. I, we, we had discussed having a meeting on that day. We did. Yeah. Um, December 21. December 20th. Okay. I can work with them to get that. December 20th. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And if there's things that you need to share with me to translate down and, and for any sort of, I know the way my brain works. I like, I love seeing something ahead of time to be able to process the, the stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thank you everybody. And thanks for your, your input and your involvement. This is, this has been really great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you Bill, go ahead. Um, thanks everybody. When we did the report back in Tom 2018 19, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> there was some pushback from either Foley's or Next Gen. <clears throat> and I, yeah, and it and it resonated with me that we shouldn't be creating facilities that are going to be directly competitive with facilities that people spent millions of dollars and invested their lives in. Yeah. Uh, I thought it would be worthwhile. <clears throat> We're going to meet every two weeks and we can meet here or someplace else that meeting at Foley's and Next Gen and getting a brief tour from them as to what they're about would be very helpful for all of us. Because yeah. we, uh, I do recall, uh, Foley was just yeah, in its infancy. I'm not going to say yet. And yeah. so I think they were understandably concerned about their financials yeah. and their model, I think they are going great guns. So it'd be interesting to get uh, Mike Bowie's input. I wonder if his opinion changes uh, just because he. I've never been in either facility, so I'd love to be able to see appears, what yeah, they're offering because we're talking well, about what kind of space are we going to pr propose? Yeah. Well, one of the things that and activities. I, I think I mentioned at a previous meeting that. You know, we probably didn't need to have that much gym space. And I also threw out the example of the rock climbing gym. We have a world class rock climbing gym. Yeah. We don't need to do any rock climbing gym in this place. We have okay. did that. And I sent that article to all of you about the pickleball facility yeah. that's actually in Scarborough. It's over yeah. a Muzzy Road line, I think, somewhere over there. But that that's going to be, I don't know how many, 20 something, yeah. 30, 30 shorts. 
we probably don't I mean great we can have the flexibility maybe throw pickleball in our multi-use core but i don't think it needs to be a programming focus if there's going to be a, such a big facility really not dedicated space. right no, yeah. i think one of the like, conversations that we have the community center advisory board level where we talk about introduction introductory to being in a gym where i would never sign up for polies because i would feel completely overwhelmed and i wouldn't want to pay that where if I'm wrong and if Alex wants to chime in, like the conversations we have is it's like you're touching, introducing it to people or Foley's comes in and does private lessons, things like that. And so I just want to relay that there is a subset of people who don't want to join Foley's, but maybe want to be somewhat introduced to what that type of gym has to offer. And I think they've talked about bringing people in and things like that. Do and, you, but, does that the community, do you, I agree like, with do that. you offer an adult? Like, like, I know I don't I can't remember which one it is. It's I get some on the soccer mail or two. So like do you have like adult education when you do like intro to Tai Chi or things like that? And this would be a facility you could utilize for something like that? Or are those more like I know they've done like surfing. Well, okay, if you want to surf, you gotta to go to this spot to do it. Yeah, we've we've are not strong in the adult world. And that, you know, and that's where, you know, having a dedicated space, that's the problem with it. Being consistent instructors. And again, an adult wants to go and take a shower after and head out. Like we're just not that type of facility. And again, in my old building, we used to do all those intros, and we tried to bring the business that had it in to teach it. So I didn't need to worry about instructors. Right, it was like right. you have the Fall time you come in, do the basic, and you go out the door, and then now you upgrade to them. You upgrade to them. It's like karate. You do basic karate, but then that yeah, instructor yeah, the yeah, other way. Like yeah. point, I think there is a segment of folks of our residents who who would rather come to our facility, though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but yes. it's the entry. And that's not in competition with these major gyms. Yeah, that's that's not being the 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 I totally agree with that. People. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And it also kind of, I've done the most I can do here. Let's yeah. take it up a notch. Right. And, and there's also a revenue <laughs> component. To, that's a good point, you know, as yeah. far as like I can drop my daughter off at swim lessons and I can go get 15 minutes on the treadmill really hard. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. very valid, Karen. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. pointing that And Next Gen does one specifically for kids as well. 12, yes. 12 to 18 year olds, yeah. athletes, and they do it. It's a, it's a robust thing, but it's it's not if you're it's really more geared towards like i'm an athlete athlete yeah, not right. the hey general fitness well maybe i can join that too i don't have yeah. to be a superstar player and these are you versus competitors yeah, yeah like, right. like chris, right. chris and those guys like they're just and whether it's with kids. You know, judo or tai chi or yeah. or weightlifting or yeah. maga whatever mm -hmm. it is we're going to expose them to something and right. then we can and if nobody shows up for our intro classes, then we don't do that. Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. Wait a long it's time. It's a phase of everything. You've got to try to see what works. But you have to have the facility flexibility to be able to yeah. try those yeah. different things. And if your club does really well, then it could be a regular thing that you do right. more and more. And the club gets more right. robust. Right. Okay. Um, I think we've got time to go through this. But I don't think we're going to dive into it a whole lot. But um, the, the town undeveloped properties list, I think you sent a list. Yeah. Of and, I, and I don't think that I pulled it. I'll just... There's a again in in, in just the, that. yeah thirty thousand foot. Yeah. So the reason why and you saw that Keith put it in his slide was eight acres. That most of the properties that we have in town that we own have some sort of wetland component to it. So that's why I put eight. I mean, I, I've been told between you know five and six acres is probably what you're shooting for for some minimal footprint. And again, that all depends on how the shape of a piece of property is. Like we we learned that with the school process. I only went eight because every property I looked at probably had three to four acres of wetland and some sort of mitigation. So it turns into something else. Um, I did put on that sheet um, the three schools sites, the three primaries, as well as the, uh, we had a question regarding um, the Garwin Architect building that we lease. That site is on there as far as, because people were asking those acreage. So those are there for your, um, you know, as an ask, uh, if that's something we want to look at in the future, kind of where those are. Um, you know how many how many of those, I don't have it right I mean, how many of those sites were con contiguous to the existing school campus? No, there's no, no. I, I went through no, all of the addresses all outskirts. and there's a lot of remote areas that yeah. just wouldn't yeah. just wouldn't yeah. they're on the other side of the turnpike there. Yeah. Uh, where it, I just I just wish that the uh, the old Oak Hill school site was bigger, bigger because yeah. yeah. that would be a, I really think a lot of the discussion we've been having today is is focused more on having this facility accessible to, in my mind, to Oak Hill, uh, whether it's part of the school complex or whatever. Because I think if we go too far out on some of these, you're not going to, one, you're not going to draw anybody to, you know, 
and if there's the talk about what do we do provide access to the kids after school i mean they're not going to drive five miles no way to pick them up or they're not going to come unless they can walk to her. Yeah, and exactly. they probably yeah. shouldn't drop. I'm going to eat my words, but I think it's important to tell you now that I do not support putting this on the municipal campus. Um, I don't think you guys have been to open house at Wentworth lately. I don't think you've been to a football game lately. And I'm telling you, when you're parking a quarter of a mile to go to Wentworth at an event, I just could not even. And I've and this is not news to Tom. I've said this publicly for about a year. I, after coming on planning board, watching traffic movement plans, and all of that. I will not support it putting it on the municipal campus. I think it's like, I mean, you'll see that there's no acreage there anyways. And I think it's really important to think about expansion and growth. And also if the library wants to add, I mean, we're now taking away, I mean, it's just, I I just wanted to make that disclaimer at this point. Um, is it um, for the other side of route one um, in terms of sewer and all that, is it, is it, just not realistic that it, there's no way. The side of the highway? Oh, the side yeah. of the highway? Yeah. It's just, Sorry, I'm a, it, It's a cost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you could pick it. When we went through this, I was on the school build committee, and when we're looking at those sites, it was like either mitigate wetlands or the cost of growing water and sewer. Unless you had some other big project come along, it's really an expensive undertaking. Um, but it doesn't mean it doesn't match up with something down the road the conversation we have at council and coming from planning board again is is the soon the, the second someone puts that over the highway it opens up a whole nother door of expansion for development because there's a lot of limitations in development right now because there are no public utilities so again i do not support the town expanding public utilities because it expands growth here i gotta very 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 respectfully disagree with <laughs> um very, very, very <laughs> only because I, I I think we need to demonstrate just you know complete um, exploration of all possibilities mm -hmm. and and you are quite like like you write in your um, your statement. Um, I'm just always interested in kind of maximizing our existing facilities with the sea of asphalt and parking lots that sit empty for vast periods of time. And yes, we have um, predictable times where it's it's a problem, but. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want that to limit us in terms of just fully exploring and understanding and eliminating. If so that's there, the case. Parking garage. Go up. There, there are ways, and, and maybe they're not feasible and, and not something we should consider. But yeah. um, the question is where outside the, the, the municipality or going to the downs, which you already went that path so forever with the school project, which is, is already pick your side, which one you're on, but there's a big fight already about that. Where else in town could you possibly find eight acres that we could then buy develop the kids that can be used? Because if you go tell if you go that way, I'm going this way. I live on the side of town. I would drive to Portland before it's quicker to go to Portland for me it's than it is to Pine Point, point and vice versa. So, the eight, again, the eight acre is like just a magic number. Yeah, I would six, use five, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Like, but if we're it's talking like the land that we own way out by, you know, going out to the well, Road, and that's like we should do the criteria yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. once we say the criteria, I think we're gonna eliminate this whole spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to start looking at what lands are available for sale right. and be my guy. Right. Now, I realize there's probably a sacred cow, but the memorial park behind Town Hall. Of course. You know, if you can, but then you need to build the park. How about the fire station? And then put that somewhere else. <laughs> Just so, kidding. I mean, Joke. Memorial Park would be great, especially if you had fields and stuff there because you could tie into some of that stuff. But again, you're going to run into. If you take over some of those things, it's like if you built the school there, well, what do you do with the field? What well, do you I do with the, that this was, and that and this and that? That was the exercise we did in the school thing, and Todd Jepson had to talk me off the ledge like 20 times because I'm like, where are you going to put that? And so to Tom's point, I think we need to look at everything yeah. based on the criteria. And I'm going to say this, and Alex actually asked me this earlier today in an email, but like, you know, we would need other fits, field space, but like a Black Point Park is probably not any more central than anything else with Virginia Park and at the church. You know, yeah. like, so we need to look at everything, even though it may cause a shift. Yeah. No, it's not on there. I didn't do any, I didn't do any existing open spaces, like the dedicated parks, but I didn't put Memorial, didn't put Black Point. Didn't I, think put you, any. I think you probably should. There's a Black, displacement. Black Point Park never gets used. Which so it's, one? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd I'd either, from four to, from five to seven, it's seven, always yeah. busy. But I think, but again, it's one of those things where if you could, we're already short field space, but it may be easier to find three parcels of three acres 
and one that fits yep. a community center and 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 I can find some space for level fields right now in town. You can buy not going there way yet. cheaper, but I'm saying, but way cheaper than right than right. You know, one of these larger, larger spaces. If you can find one, right. there's places to make tiny fields versus right. I this think, type of space. I think Todd's right. I think we should include that them all based on the that are outside of the box. Yeah, we'll, we'll and all of this is predicated right. on a kind of an independently developed criteria for the site, and then you run potential sites against these criteria and, yeah. and you'll, you know, you're going to well, come down with a short list pretty quickly. You have to look at what, why people wouldn't want you to take that. So they don't want to take Memorial Park because it's a central place for people in the community to use, but mm -hmm. we're replacing mm -hmm. it with exactly mm -hmm. that. With the same thing. Yeah. They don't have more uses. That you can yeah. use year round as opposed to. What yeah. you, can, you know, what do you do other than Thursday and the you just gave park. me a migraine. I <laughs> Right. No, no, I don't. Used. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. No, yeah, but I think it should be. I, 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 it should be discussed. With point of the exercise, it should be absolutely on the table. I agree. And I'm more about Black Point Park than Memorial Park, probably. But, yeah. I will say though, just because I've been a lot of the things when we've tried to expand. Transportation is a big issue. It is. You know, I know when we work with the school, trying to when we were having issues with staff, can we get kids to move from this school to that school to here? So. You know, knowing the bus routes and how they work and what that kind of stuff is important because, again, we, the demographics we're targeting, if they can't get there, you know what I mean? Whether that's in the bus route or that's, you know, running shuttles to those guys. So um, I think more central is better uh, in the aspect of checking those things. But I think the criteria is the most important thing to be thinking about. And that's what we did at the school. And that's why that circle of being connected to was one of the top five criteria for maintenance and transportation and educational sharing that that's why that school site got narrowed down to i think it was within a mile was the, the what was the acreage requirement for the school for the uh it school was department? between 20 and 20 25 yeah yeah so the other one of the other pieces we talked about on the 2018 committee was the the land just west of the existing outdoor hockey rank Mm -hmm. Or actually, which, which the is, outdoor rink itself, or yeah. the rink, and, oh, and, yes, and, that was one. And maybe yeah, the because and they've done it. Right, yeah, the soccer yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But again, those are the sites. Yeah, because yeah, that was part yeah. of prior yeah. to the 218. Those were done. It was right. basketball court, tennis court, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wentworth Field, my building, and the ice rink was a you know was a spot. Yeah, and if you go outside of the boundary of the ice rink right now, you're going to get major wetlands. Right. I mean, but. The good news is the town owns a bunch of lands that could be um, used offset mitigation. Yeah. Um, Theoretically. Or the land trust. What what is we're the, pretty the, wetland saturated. Saturated. I think yeah. the difference of a site on campus is that you would have to rely on existing surface parking for schools and for other use, and that presents its own challenges, I appreciate. But if, if you do so, your footprint is limited to building and you know, kind of circulation around it. So it's not eight acres, it's something less. But uh, there's a trade-off. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so with with the mitigation, how is there a range that it has to be within? My recollection is when we built Wentworth, okay. the regulatory Army Corps and DP basically said, that you, "Town, you have, yep, there's no more wetland impact You're done. you can have on this site." And I had that done. conversation with a town engineer just when I started looking at uh, this. When they put that new road down the side of Memorial Park, it was. Okay. It was the, given the last two to get that Got it. little piece right. of wetland between. So that, yeah. Maybe it's worth asking the question again, but that was the very clear yeah. directive we were given yeah. back when Wentworth was built. Well, that's a problem. With, <laughs> without mitigation, or even with mitigation, even with mitigation, there's there's a there's, there's a threshold a that I, apparently we have we're approaching or we've passed. Yep. Uh, that would be good to know. Yeah. That would eliminate something. <laughs> <Right. Pretty fast. laughs> yeah. Does. If you can't build, you know. Um, yeah. Who's who fits? Is that? Yeah, so I can check with the engineer, but I think, you know, again, going back to the question around the criteria, we kind of talked about last meeting is what are those priorities and criteria? And availability is one, and accessibility is another, because if it doesn't, you can't build on it or you can't get to it or you can't, then those are ones that just come off the list. Well, and Todd, on, our, on that point, I think you included as a handout, this happens to be the criteria that um, the school used, yeah. whether it makes sense for your use. Yeah, that was, I just gave you, I apologize. Yeah, I didn't send that to you. I just put that in your packet today. Uh, I did send you the library one through right. email. Oh, I and I think each of these is probably further fleshed out. We can probably get that further detail if you want to know, but those were the points that the school thought were important 
to compare all the potential sites. And I and I think it's out applicable out well, then for this most of them appear to be. Yeah. So the, yeah, at least maybe the four top sites. Maybe that's homework is to consider this program. Are there sorry, I was one question. Are there pieces of land there that could be exchanged for other land? More? I mean, are they are these market like are these yeah are these marketable pieces of property? In most cases, the town owned land is either fully developed or it's, um, it's no been given to us. That's yeah. what I yeah, that, okay. When I looked at that list, I said not always. That, 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 liberty. There isn't anything because we yeah. we looked at that years ago. We've yeah. been yeah. yeah. So okay. I'll throw out something Nancy Crowell has thought is on the other side of 114 uh, uh, towards the Oak apartment, apartment complex. There's a big chunk of land between Bank of America and where the Oak, whatever they call it, apartments mm -hmm. are, that's owned by the same people. Yes. And some of it's wet, but some of it isn't. Uh, and she's always thought that that would be a very developable. Now you have to go across 114, which with the, for all the students, I don't like that, but who knows what what system you could establish on the roadway to make that safe. Soccer benefit is behind like Hannaford between the two. It's it's like an island of dry surrounded by what pretty much. Yeah. Well, it's once you get once you get to the dry, then it's That's dry. That's the should get. This, yeah. Steve Bird represents uh, Alpha Management, or Gavin Rattel yeah, owns all the property. And, yep. and uh, in the context of the school discussion, they kind of offered up in a, a willingness to be cooperative. They don't own enough land for to be a viable school site. Um, but there's property behind that, the Foley property that is is very developable. Again, that was not a viable school school site because they weren't willing to sell. But uh, we certainly should talk to Burrs. I, Todd and I are chomping at a bit to start engaging with people. We don't want to get ahead of your process here, frankly. I would definitely encourage you to I see what, that I, that property's not going anywhere. Where where they're at, what they there's not at risk of development or sale in you know the next six months. So I, I don't feel like we need to act immediately, but that's clearly something we should look at. Well, I think anything we can at least have well, we're developing the criteria. I don't think a conversation with anybody would hurt because land that's developable is selling faster than you can mm -hmm. shake a stick at it. So yep. I mean if, if it's okay with you guys. I think Tom and I are okay, at least knocking on doors and saying, hey, what do you think? While we're then gathering your criteria to say, okay, these two properties may be available. Do they match what you're looking for? Yeah. Because if we don't. What are your criteria ought to be a willing seller? I don't know that oh, absolutely. the town has the appetite. I don't speak for the council to you know, yeah, forcibly amazing. take take land. So I think a willing seller is an important thing to know. Yeah. Is it available? Right. Is it available? Uh, item nine is site visits. So I did send you just to kind of think. I did two kind of tours. One is up the mid coast where there's a lot of the YMCA's that I'm very familiar with, and there are a lot of the directors. Up to Waterville where there's Colby with a new facility, and then the, the just renovated uh, Boys and Girls Club. So okay. that's an easy tour. And then I also Jill had it's Jill's. I shouldn't say me. I put her on the big paper. Jill found some uh, great YMCA south of us that have a lot of the amenities that you identified in the programs um, that are like size as communities with some, some decent features. Uh, I started on that spreadsheet to put the features and then it's got, it got overwhelming. But I think when we did the tour, Tom and I went on the last tour, we were kind of broad brushing. And once you kind of decide when and how we want to do that, I'd like to dive down a little deeper for you to say, okay, we're going to the facility and here's the, here's what you really need to focus on. You know, it's this lobby that, that you've kind of mentioned or this type of amenity because we got squirreled off when we went. It was like we were in pump rooms and we were in we were in everything else was above our our yeah. our educational level. <laughs> I think you'd find it really helpful. It just opens your eyes. I'm not a world I'm familiar with, but you know what you like and what's intriguing and it's just very thought provoking. Um, and you also know what you don't like. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I was up in the Alpine Center, yeah. the Boys and Girls Club yeah. slash YMCA yeah. in Waterville this year for a meeting. And, I know the director up there for yeah. doing some things, and it's a very impressive site. Yep. And yeah. I drove right by Colby's construction, but I didn't stop in yeah. on the way by that. So, so. is your thought, Todd, that we try to find a Saturday or Sunday afternoon where we might be able to visit some of these? Uh, that's totally, I think that's an appropriate, again, you don't want to um, 
we can figure out how long I can map it out a little further. I did roughly, but yeah, I think, you know, find a day that works for folks and get on the bus and yeah, and run. More than a half day to, to directly get up there to see yeah. two or three of them and get back here. Yeah. 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 You're committing a Saturday. Yeah. You know what I mean? To get to either direction to do it right. And, um, but I think <clears> if there's <throat> days that people are interested, I'm happy. Todd's that. an excellent bus driver too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would suggest definitely making the trip up to Alpha though, because I was blown away by it when oh. I was in there. Yeah. So and there's other stuff on the way to that. Well, yeah, you've yeah. got you've got all the wise along the coast that all have something different. Yeah. You know, yeah. you go to you go to you go to uh, Bath and they've got a separate therapy pool with a competition pool with elevated. You go to Wisconsin, it's a combo pool. You go to Booth Bay Y, they have a elevated deck with a pool shared therapy pool on the same footprint. But then they also have a field house with a walking track and multi-purpose court. So. Yeah all three of those right there. And then the YMCA Boys and Club has been renovated. So that's a kind of bigger footprint. And then you've got obviously the Cadillac and Colby to say, but what I liked about Colby when I looked at the video was their common space, you know, that community feel. It was like you could transition and meet and go sit and, hey, let's study here before practice or just shoot the breeze and have a cup of coffee. And you weren't feel like you're being kicked out. So that's how Colby's, that's what I like most about their facility. So maybe we could do another poll of uh, Saturdays between Thanksgiving and Christmas, somewhere in there. That might be a good time to do that. Is that a terrible time to do that? I don't know. I think even before Thanksgiving work. I'll, I'll put on some Saturdays and you guys can rank them. I'll, I'll leave that up to you as far as how it won't take me but a day to kind of coordinate with folks. Okay. Is there any place locally like? I mean, I've been in South Portland, I've been in Westbrook. They're completely different oh, genres yeah. of buildings. Yeah, Westbrook's just fun. Well, so it's an old school, yeah. but so South Portland, yeah. even the other ones are smaller and they've got, you know, you've got everything worth it because those we can do on our own too. Just, yeah, you know, I pop. think any, anything, any place you can go and just explore. And for me, it's about getting to the, the director of the facility, the person at the front desk, and the custodian because you're going to get three different stories. Mm -hmm. I love my facility, it's too noisy. Things a pain in the ass to clean. Like you, I mean, those are real. You know, getting yeah. to those type of people is it's yeah. worth the conversation and meeting with them. Yeah. Okay, so, so probably going to send something other than that. Um, we have our next meeting on two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's a, then we had one with two or two different days. We moved to Thanksgiving. That everything Monday. skips after Thanksgiving. Yeah, that went to the Monday of Thanksgiving yeah. week. It's twenty six. So the twenty six. Exactly. And where are we having that meeting? We know yet? Uh, the first two are here, and the next four at the public safety building. Um, bigger room. So this better is um, science. Um, and then the next four are at public Yeah, safety. the next one is here in the remainder of our calendar that we said at the public safety building. And then that is So that includes the 21st? Or did we don't have that on the calendar there yet? Uh, and I got I put them on my calendar. We have 12, 26 this year of October, and then the 9th and the 20th are at Public Safety Building, and then the 7th and 21st of December are at Public Safety Building. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and again, and I'll leave this up, I'm saying because Keith's still here, but if there are um, parts or pieces, Keith, that we ever need more public input, that's a big enough space to ask people to comment on. Yeah. If we ever get to that in that space, that's why those bigger spaces are nice. Okay. Anything else anybody want to bring up? Great meeting. Great. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Good job, guys. Which one? Thank you, everybody. Which one's your public safety? What?